My name is Fabrice and this is Animated Anatomy. In my previous video I have talked about the functional cortex regions and now I want to talk about the emotions. Emotions are seen as something we cannot physically hold or grab, something we cannot see but only feel. In 1936, the Portuguese neurologist Agus Moniz introduced a surgical operation called the prefrontal lobotomy. The surgery was supposed to cure people and help those who were emotionally unstable or had pathological behavior. Believe it or not, he received a Nobel Prize for this procedure. However, it was in 1937 when a doctor called Amaro Fiamberti during the Nazi time in Italy invented a new surgical procedure called the transorbital lobotomy. The procedure later improved by an American physician, Dr. Walter Freeman. They were basically using an instrument called the orbitoclast, which was essentially an ice pick. They used this instrument to reach the prefrontal cortex of the brain through the eye sockets and destroy the connections of this cortex with the rest of the brain. The patients were left emotionally blunted because this part of the brain was connected to the emotional part of the brain called the limbic system. The patients looked as if they were cured and Dr. Freeman went on to make the surgery popular. Walter Freeman charged just $25 for each procedure that he performed. After four decades, Freeman had personally performed as many as 3,500 lobotomies in 23 states, of which 2,500 used his ice pick procedure, despite the fact that he had no formal surgical training. In February 1967, Freeman performed his final surgery on Helen Mortensen. Mortensen was a long-term patient and was receiving her third lobotomy from Dr. Freeman. She died of a cerebral bleeding, as did as many as hundred of his other patients, and he was finally banned from performing the surgery. His patients often had to be rethought how to eat and use the bathroom. Relapses were common and some never recovered, and about 15% died from the procedure. This brain region is involved in planning complex cognitive behavior, personality expression, decision making, and moderating social behavior. The patients who survived the procedure were severely damaged for the rest of their lives. So now I will talk about the limbic system. The limbic system is a complex set of brain structures located on both sides of the thalamus, right under the cerebrum. It supports many different functions, including emotion, behavior, motivation, long-term memory and olfaction. There are three types of structures that create the limbic system. Those are the cortical areas, the subcortical areas and the diencephalic structures. I will start by explaining the cortical areas. First I will remove the frontal bone of the skull, then I'll remove the parietal bone of the skull and you can already see the cortex of the brain. I will also remove the left hemisphere of the brain so you can see right here the limbic lobe behind the corpus callosum. This here is the corpus callosum. Now if I remove the cranial nerves and also remove the skeletal system, if you look at it from here you can see the orbitofrontal cortex right here. Here you can find the olfactory cortex that is associated with olfactory system of course and also if we look at our brain from this point of view here you can find the temporal pole and behind the temporal pole you can entorhinal cortex related with memory and associative components. There are two more structures really interesting that are here included in the cortical areas of the limbic system and that is right here you can see the hippocampus while this is the hippocampus of the left side there's also one on the right side and right here you can see the fornix coming out if we make our model transparent you can see here the fornix and the hippocampus right here well you're probably wondering what is this well the hippocampus is here and it's part of the cortex while the fornix is white matter connecting the hippocampus with these structures here and those are the mammillary bodies so the fornix connects the hippocampus with mammillary bodies and it also connects the hippocampus with septal nuclei well that's the next structure i wanted to mention but that already belongs to the subcortical areas and those are the septal nuclei that are right here below the rostrum of the corpus callosum. 
Now, if you look at right here, you can see this is the temporal lobe. So symmetrically on that position, we have right here the amygdala. It is located deep within the temporal lobes and related with number of emotional processes. Now to give you a slightly better understanding, I will also select the caudate nucleus so that not everything is so transparent. But the caudate nucleus does not belong to the limbic system. I did that because I wanted you to see something right here below and that is the accumbens nucleus. This nucleus is involved in reward system, pleasure and addiction as well. Now probably here all these transparent things confusing you while more laterally from the thalamus we have the claustrum and the putamen. I will remove these structures. So those were the subcortical areas, the septal nuclei, amygdala and the nucleus accumbens. Now I mentioned also the mammillary bodies in, when I was talking about the fornix and how mammillary bodies were connected with the hippocampus via fornix. Well, mammillary bodies belong to the diencephalic structures. They're not part of the subcortical areas nor cortical areas. But they are part of the limbic system and they are there as the part of the diencephalic structures. But they're not the only diencephalic structures included in the limbic system. There's also the hypothalamus and the anterior nuclei of the thalamus. That's why I removed the structures right here so you can see the thalamus and the anterior nuclei of the thalamus are actually part of the limbic system and they're there as the diencephalic structures. Now remember I also mentioned the hypothalamus and to explain you the hypothalamus I needed my old illustration that I made and this part right here is called the hypothalamus. This here is the pituitary gland. You can see the mammillary bodies right here and the thalamus right here. So pituitary gland, I did not mention it as a part of the limbic system. So here we had the hypothalamus. I mentioned pituitary gland only for the orientational purposes. This here was the mammillary body and the thalamus right here. So those are the diencephalic structures that are included in the limbic system. So now if we go back to our model, he's missing half of his skull, but that's okay because I would like to explain you the function of these structures and you got to see them good. The structures of the limbic system are involved in motivation, emotion, learning and memory. The limbic system is where the subcortical structures that I've explained, the amygdala, the accumbens nucleus and the septal nuclei right here meet the cerebral cortex that I also explain the cortical areas. The limbic system operates by influencing the endocrine system and the autonomic nervous system. It is highly interconnected with the nucleus accumbens. That's the nucleus right here. The brain's pleasure center which plays a role in sexual arousal and the high derived from certain recreational drugs. In 1954, Alds and the Milner found that the rats with the metal electrodes implanted in their nucleus accumbens repeatedly press a lever activating this region and did so in preference to eating and drinking. Eventually they did so until they die from being completely exhausted. The limbic system is also tightly connected to the prefrontal cortex. Some scientists contend that this connection is related to the pleasure obtained from solving problems. To cure severe emotional disorders, this connection was sometimes surgically severed, a procedure of psychosurgery called a prefrontal lobotomy. Patients having undergone this procedure often became passive and lacked all motivation. It consists of cutting and scrapping away most of connections to and from the prefrontal cortex the anterior part of the frontal lobes of the brain. The procedure controversial from its inception was actually a mainstream procedure in some western countries even though it had serious side effects. To perform this procedure they have used the orbitoclast. This instrument is essentially an ice pick. Dr. Walter Freeman, who was really famous for this procedure, suggested that if the regular anesthesia was not available then simply use electroshocks to render the patient unconscious. 
Thousands of people who have been treated with this method had completely lost the remnants of their mental health. Their faith had been irrevocably broken. The prefrontal lobotomy is also used as an example of medical barbarism and an exemplary instance of medical trampling of the patient's rights. Now let me explain you the difference between the prefrontal lobotomy and the transorbital lobotomy. The transorbital lobotomy was basically the prefrontal lobotomy that was done by inserting an ice pick through the eye sockets, while the other prefrontal lobotomies didn't have to be done that way necessarily. But now let's go back to our limbic system and explain shortly a few really interesting things. The function of limbic system is associated, as I've mentioned, with many things. Emotions, memory, sensory processing, time perception, what time is it, what date is it. It is associated with attention, consciousness, instincts. It is associated with actions and motor behavior. Well, there are a few really interesting things here. Well, for example, the amygdala is important for attentional and emotional processes. In social processing, it is important for facial recognition and trustworthiness. Here, some scientists have proven that if this part of the brain is damaged, a person can actually associate someone who has been really bad to him as a trustworthy person and vice versa. Now, what you're doing right now, you're watching this video and you're trying to learn the orientation of certain structures and where certain structures are. If I tell you that the brain is right here and the nose is more anteriorly fr from the brain, you will remember that and you will learn that. You will easily learn that if the hippocampus in your brain is working good. Well, the hippocampus is part of the brain that is important for spatial memory. It is important for learning about the environment and the spatial orientation. The hippocampus over the decades has also been found to have huge impact in learning. So keep your hippocampus safe if you want to pass all the exams. It was a hard and painful way to reach the knowledge about the emotions and how human brain works. Now we have a slightly better understanding and better pharmaceutical approaches and methods. Now we understand the emotional part of the brain. And in my next video I will talk about the endocrine system and pituitary gland. You can watch that video here. You can also watch my previous video here. If you like my lessons and want to purchase my software, then you should go to my website animatedanatomy.com. If you don't have money to purchase my software, then you should subscribe here for more new virtual dissection classes that I release regularly on my channel. Thank you.